So I'm Steve Mushro. I'm the founder and CEO of China Net Cloud, and we run the backend servers and infrastructure for Chinese internet and game companies, and provide cloud infrastructure and computing, uh, both publicly and privately, to various companies here. So we, we, we were having a chat earlier about what, what exactly is cloud computing. So can yeah, that, that's can a good question. That's speaking. a good question. <laughs> uh, I think there are at least three or four different definitions. You know, there are the, what we call corporate or virtualization, the VMware uh, type model where <coughs> you're in a company and you run your, your exchange and file servers and whatever on a, on a virtualized um, set of servers. That's been around several years and it's, it's fairly mature now. Then there's grid computing, what IBM calls cloud computing, but that's really scientific um, uh, weather models and this sort of thing, crap, oil, oil field discoveries. So it runs on lots of different computers, but it's really not cloud computing, what we would call it. And then there's cloud infrastructure, which is what we do, which is really providing virtualized servers and systems to the internet space so you can run your favorite website or run anything you want. Uh, you don't have to change anything, just run whatever software you already have. And then there are cloud applications, which you hear a lot about. So that includes uh, Salesforce.com, Google Stocks, things like that. These are really applications that run on a bunch of servers somewhere that happen to be a cloud. And so it gets very confusing because there's many different pieces and parts and they're, they're all based on some sort of virtualized or fake server. And the question is how many do you have, how do you run them and things like that. So, so when, when you're looking at the, at, at the China market, you're saying that there's really no you know, cloud applications like there is in like North America or, or Europe. Why, why do you think that is? I think it's still early here. There are really no, uh, no very little cloud infrastructure other than what we're doing and some of the things IBM is doing in grid computing. There's no real companies doing it. It's very capital intensive is the first problem. And it's also very skill intensive. So if you look at companies like Google or Amazon, you know, they've spent billions of dollars building out sort of cloud infrastructure, usually for themselves. And then how do they make that available to other people? Nobody here doing that. Nobody here, uh, and they have the money, but, but it takes years and years and then lots of money and it's not clear that it actually makes any money. So uh, that still remains to be seen. The second side is it, t it takes a lot of skill to run these things. It's one thing to run one server or two or 10 or even a thousand you know, physical servers, and there are several companies here doing that. But when they're virtual and, and sort of all moving around and all going up and down and crashing and all of this, the, the technical challenges become quite, str quite stronger. And uh, the reason, one of the reasons our business exists is because right now in China there's a huge shortage of technical talent. And so it's very hard to get these things done, even if you have all the money. How are you ready to deal with the, the legalities of, of cloud computing across borders? Well, you know, fortunately we're an infrastructure uh, operations, so we don't actually provide the applications. So to some extent, we don't have to, we don't have to deal with that. Um, <clears throat> but that, you know, it is a serious issue. You have, you know, we're in China, and a lot of companies uh, have concerns about information that's here, or information in the U.S. or Taiwan or different parts of the of the country or of the world. And you know, it's a very unclear area. You know, Yahoo's had some issues around some of this and different people, and and. Uh, you know, it's already complex, right? Because in eBay, there are certain things that are legal to sell in one country but not in others. And that, even that area is not organized, right? You can't sell certain things in Germany that you can sell in France, but you can sell in England. And um, it's still very unclear. And that's, you know, those laws have been there for 50 years and, and the technology's been there for 20. And we still don't really know. So when it comes down to who owns this document that is sitting on a server in Germany and is processed in China that goes through something in Japan, who knows, you know? Um, as you were mentioning earlier though, as you get closer to the corporate world, these things become more important. Historically, they haven't been that important. You know, uh, on the internet, I'm not sure anybody cares at the moment. Um, so the enterprise may, may lead the way on the legal side, uh, but uh, it's still very unclear. You know, a lot of people don't host their stuff in China because you know, they're not sure what the legal frameworks are, and so they tend to use things that are hosted outside, even though they're based here. Um, but that, you know, that'll all improve over time. You were mentioning that one of, one, of the, one of the things that you do is you create uh, private clouds mm -hmm. for, for corporations. Can you, can you speak to the different ways that these companies are, are, are using cloud computing here in China? Yeah, usually our business is, is almost entirely internet based and so our customers are internet and game companies. So we don't actually do a lot of corporate work here. Um, but what we do for some companies is we build clouds for them in their own infrastructure because you already have a lot of companies that are uh, fairly good size and they have a lot of servers, they have a lot of hardware, 
usually it's not well used or utilized. They've spent either too much money on it or, you know, we're in the internet space and everything here grows. And in China, things grow fast. So you already have 10 servers and you want to grow, but you don't want to buy 10 more or 20 more and spend another, you know, whatever, $50,000. And so we'll often go in and, and virtualize that and build a cloud for a company <clears throat> to help them better leverage their assets. Because then I could take 10 real servers, make 50 sort of cloud servers, and then as they need more capacity, I can add, you know, 11 server, 12 server, 13 server. I can add capacity very economically and also move things around. And so usually it's an economic and scale issue for internet companies. Where do you see cloud computing in China going in the future? Well, I think there's two parts of that. One is you, you see more infrastructure, definitely. Whether you see Amazon style, you know, EC2 sort of infrastructure players come in, probably over time you'll see some. But uh, you will see some, you'll see like the companies coming in, providing the basic infrastructure, sort of the business we're involved in. And then I think you'll see the cloud applications, uh, whether it's Google style docs or other sorts of online storage, which you already have some of, you know, upload my files, keep them somewhere, to, you know, as yet unknown, you know, applications for netbooks or ultralight things or iPhone. The iPhone's not here yet, really, officially. So we, you know, we don't see that yet, but obviously there'll be infrastructure supporting all of that. And I think that'll be very interesting. And, some of it becomes some homegrown innovation. Uh, I think once the U.S. starts creating a lot of new and Apple and people do a lot of new stuff, you'll see a lot of that come here very quickly, um, especially once the infrastructure is there to do it economically. Still today, if there's some wonderful game or thing in the States, you still have to have, buy 100 servers to do it here. Um, we help with that, but it's still not an easy process. But once there's more infrastructure, then uh, and we try to help our customers do this, is if you have an idea or whatever, let's start on one cloud server, two cloud servers, three, you know, get started very che cheaply and simply, see if the market likes your product, and then let it grow and let it morph and that kind of stuff. And I think you'll see a lot more of that kind of thing that lets the innovation happen much more quickly and lets it certainly adapt, you know, foreign things for Chinese market and obviously Chinese language and Chinese, a lot of things. And I think you'll see a lot of that grow. Like, again, where's the revenue for it? Who knows, because I don't think anybody knows for any of this, but and the legal issues and all that will get, you know, will get tested and sorted out and, and haggled over. But uh, I think within three years probably you'll see a lot of that stuff here.